So our next topic is to talk about VLANs. We've already established from the diagrams that we should be putting our iSCSI traffic on dedicated switches, but of course we still need to be able to manage those switches and monitor them, so they will almost certainly be connected into our normal production management network. This means that we're going to be subjected to broadcasts uh, and lots of additional traffic. So the correct way to isolate the iSCSI traffic will to be put it into its own VLAN. There's two schools of thought here. We could either put them into untagged VLANs or into tagged VLANs. There is no technical reason why we should go through the effort of putting them into a tagged VLAN because this will require us to go through each piece of hardware and set the tagging ID on the host, on the SAN and on the switch. However, my personal preference is to actually use a tagged VLAN and the reason for this is that we're making a conscious effort to put the configuration on the switch and in smaller environments there is that possibility that someone might accidentally plug the wrong um, network point, point into a switch later on down the line or they may disconnect something put it into the wrong port and obviously we want to avoid, avoid uh, contaminating the iSCSI network so by making everything tagged we know that if we accidentally plug it into the wrong port we're going to actually see that the connection doesn't work so we will go back and correct that mistake so in this video I'm going to show you both ways of doing it. The easiest one is certainly to leave it as untagged and, and for most people they may want to do it but I will show you just how to do it as a tag network as well uh, if you feel you prefer to do that. We need to set the components on the switch for both the iSCSI target and the iSCSI initiators, in this case the uh, iSCSI port from the NetApp and the connection from the host to the switch. So we're going to do this um, both through command line and web interface because it's always good practice. So let's connect to the switch. So we need to configure all the ports on the switch. So we can either do this through the GUI interface uh, by coming in and selecting VLAN management. And here we have our default VLAN which all our iSCSI traffic and management traffic is on. And we can add a new VLAN here. Or we can do it through the command prompt. So I configure. Um, VLAN 20 name iSCSI and write that to memory. Uh, we can do um, and if we go back to our GUI we can see that VLAN has been created. Now at the moment no ports have been assigned to that VLAN. So what we need to do is assign untagged ports for the host and for the NetApp. So the way we do that is we come down to ports, select change, and we find the port that we want to tag, and we hit untagged, so we're going to untag it into VLAN, VLAN 20 and hit save. If we now go on to VLAN 20, we can see there's untagged ports A1. We go back to the default VLAN, we can see that now A1 no longer exists in the untagged network. We can also do this through the command prompt. Uh, we're going to have to add the host to this, so the way we can look that up, which one it is. We've got our dual network adapters, which are seven, six and seven. If we look at our ports, six and seven are 13 and 15. So we can also add, so we've got two ways of adding these. We can select iSCSI and selecting untag and save, or we can do it through the command prompt. So select VLAN 20 and untag 13 and untag 15 and write memory. If we go back to our GUI, let's refresh.
we can see that we put the A1 through on the um, GUI interface. We can also view this information through the command prompt by doing show VLAN 20. And we can see 13, 15 and A1 are all untagged on VLAN 20. So now we've separated the iSCSI traffic out from the mainstream uh, management traffic. And if we go and check to make sure that we can still see our storage. See our storage is still available, so everything is still communicating nicely. If we wanted to double check, we could bring up a, pro uh, a command prompt for the host. And we can ping the net app. We can see them they're connected. And just to show, if we had not put the host or we not put the NetApp, say for instance, into that VLAN, so if we move the NetApp back into VLAN 1, so we go to VLAN 1 and hit port change, find SAM 1, mark it as untagged, and save. We will now see that. This is back into VLAN 1. Indeed, even through the command prompt, we can see that it's no longer in there. So if we go and have a look back here, we will no longer be able to ping and we'll have lost communication to the net app. We can see that. Go into our storage, properties, and we don't even have managed paths to click on. So let's put so let's put that back into the correct VLAN. And you can see that I made a mistake because that should be untagged A1. come back over here, we can now ping and everything's all connected. So here we've now created an untagged VLAN for all our iSCSI traffic. Now as, as we add more hosts or indeed connect SAN2, we need to make sure that all the ports that they go into the switch are on the untagged VLAN 20. For a bit of fun, we're gonna change this to a tagged network. A little bit more involved, we can go to iSCSI Let's just refresh this so we get our latest information. So all our ports here. We're now going to tag. So we're going to change this. We are going to put this as a tagged. And we're going to change them back to untagged in VLAN 1. So let's just check this out. Everything is untagged in VLAN 1. And in the iSCSI VLAN, we have got the three ports tagged. Now, because we have tagged these, we also need to make sure that the devices, the NetApp and the ESXi host, are also got tagged. Because at the moment, if we try pinging, we're not gonna, we're gonna get, we'll get requests timed out. Ah, we haven't. Something's gone wrong. So though we put this into a tagged environment, why are we still getting internet traffic? And that's because I made a mistake. I put everything back into untagged VLAN 1. Well, as the devices are untagged, they are 
able to communicate on the VLAN one. So what I should have done is set them to no, i.e. they are in no untagged VLAN and only in the tagged VLAN 20. So that was my mistake, let's correct this. So we go to VLAN one, change, I could have edited this out of the video, but in reality, mistakes like these happen. And you need to give a classic example why you need to make sure you check as you go along. You make a change, you understand what the expected outcome should be, you attest that expected outcome. If it doesn't, then you've made a mistake. We all make mistakes. We're going to change that to forbid and save. As expected, we now get a request timed out. So we know that this is not into the standard VLAN one, which has got the management information in. Potentially high traffic, high broadcasts. So now we need to go through and set all the other devices to be a tagged VLAN. Let's start with the NetApp. Okay, so now we need to make the configuration changes on the NetApp itself. Now, you know, in the past I've said about using the command line, and I do like people to use the command line to get familiar with it, but I think as we've also said in the past, that making interface changes or network changes is better done through the interface due to the fact that if you do it through the command line, you have to go through and manually update the RC file, um, otherwise those changes will be lost after a reboot. So in this instance, we're going to go through and we're going to put the NetApp onto the VLAN 20 that we've created. So if we look under the networking interface, we've got our management interface here, which we need to leave on the standard VLAN. And we've got our iSCSI traffic interface here. Now, first thing we need to do is disable it. I've just done that uh, before I started the video. So I've disabled this, inter this interface. And the next stage is we need to delete the IP address because we're going to associate this IP address with a new VLAN 20 interface that we're going to create. The way the NetApp works is that when you create a VLAN, it's going to effectively create an instance of the physical port that has that VLAN configuration against it, and you'll need to assign the IP address against that, that virtual interface effectively. And of course, you can't have the IP address against both the physical and the virtual. So the first instance is we're going to delete that IP address. Next, we are going to create the VLAN. Uh, we're going to create it on E0E, which is where our iSCSI traffic is going. We're going to create it as 20 and, and create. And as you can see, as I said, it's created a VLAN interface off the physical one. And it's uh, noted here by the interface dash 20. So we're going to edit that. Okay. And then we're going to bring this interface up. So now we've got this new VLAN 20 interface that has the same IP address as before. But of course, we're not going to be able to ping this from the host because we've still not put the host onto VLAN 20. So we're going to go over and do that now. So we come to our host and select configuration and networking and into the VM kernel. And we're going to select the VLAN 20. And on the second path that we configured earlier, I also need to put it on 20. Uh, those warnings, of course, are just saying that if you're doing this in a production environment, it could uh, stop the traffic. But of course, we wouldn't be doing this configuration on a, a production system. Right, so the question now is, if we go back here, can we ping our NetApp? And indeed we can. So what we have now created is a tagged VLAN 20 with all these uh, hosts. 
I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.